My name is Hamza Azir Salam and you're watching the Pakistan Daily. Today we're sitting with Awais Khan, a distinguished novelist who's the author of In the Company of Strangers and No Honor. And now Awais Khan is, uh, has completed his uh, third book. So Awais, tell us about your latest project. How is it different from your earlier novels? Well, uh, this one is a little different because um, this one tackles both Lahore and London. So this is my first time where I'm writing something that is based not just in Pakistan. My earlier novels were all completely based in Pakistan. This one has a little bit, it's set between uh, Pakistan and London. So I hope that people uh, who are resident of uh, Pakistanis who are settled in the, U in the UK or anyone, uh, or any overseas Pakistani will be able to relate to this. So that's how it's different. And uh, but uh, having said that, you'll always be able to tell that this is an Avas Khan book. So there will be some. Uh, will it make us cry? Uh, well, I'm not sure about that, but at least it'll be like the quintessential Avas Khan book. So hopefully, mm -hmm. you will be able to relate to it that way. Okay, very nice. And without revealing too many details, mm -hmm. would you like to tell us a bit about the plot and the themes you explore in the story? Well, um, yes. Without giving too much away, as they mm -hmm. say, um, it's. Uh, uh, of course, there will be a social issue at uh, at its center, which I usually uh, try to tackle when I'm writing for any, uh, w whenever I'm writing any book, I want to sort of bring social issues to light. Uh, so there will be a social issue at its heart, but uh, it's mostly about a woman um, discovering herself and finding her true self and uh, finding that independence that she desires. So that's what this book is mostly about, of a person finding themselves. Okay, very nice. And the protagonist is a, a female character. Uh, the, it's again told in a dual perspective. So there will be uh, one perspective from, uh, there's a male perspective and there's a female perspective. But yes, the predominant, the protagonist is definitely female. Yeah. Okay, that's very interesting because uh, many of Pakistani authors, especially male authors, they find it very hard to write from a female perspective. So did you have any difficulty? Writing from a female's perspective is definitely, I think, difficult because you are putting yourself in those shoes and you have a certain responsibility to make sure that it's all believable. Uh, but having said that, uh, as writers, I think it's our responsibility to bring social issues to light and to take up a challenge uh, mm -hmm. if a challenge presents itself. So I think uh, writing from any perspective is hard uh, and it just, it's just, uh, it comes with the territory. So I'm, uh, I'm glad that so far people have uh, been People have liked what I've written, so I hope that streak will mm. continue. Mm, yes, inshallah. And do you have a working name uh, for the novel? Well, uh, it's it can totally be changed. I have no idea what uh, we'll end up with, but I like to call it Someone Like Her for now. Someone yeah. Like Her? Someone like her yeah. That's an interesting name. So <laughs> Someone Like Her, the protagonist in the novel. Exactly. That's, that's what it refers mm. to. So I hope that... Uh, uh, it's, it, yeah, it's kind of like there's something for everyone in this one. So hopefully mm. it should relate to a lot of people. Okay, very nice. So let's talk a bit about your writing process. So now you're an experienced, a relatively experienced novelist with two successful novels uh, under your belt. So was it different writing uh, this, the, your third novel from, let's say, your first novel? And how has the process changed for you? I think writing any book is hard. No matter how experienced you are, uh, I've been talking to people who are 30 books old and they're like, I, I don't know how I'll write my 31st book and what am mm -hmm. I doing? And that imposter sister, uh, syndrome comes in uh, where you're like, you know, what am I even doing? Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, the problem is that w with each subsequent book, uh, you have to meet, you have to be worried about meeting expectations. So that's what mm -hmm. I'm worried about that. I hope that this one meets all the expectations that uh, No Honor has set. Mm. Uh, so uh, the bar is high so you have to sort of uh, make sure that it's even better than that but then again I think every book is different and uh, there is an audience for every book so even if it's not like No Honor I hope that people will still like it so, mm. so which is your favorite book out of these three so three? far? well I'd like to say this one because then people will read it <laughs> 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 but uh, yeah I think No Honor is definitely one of my favorite books because it's very different it's, uh, it tackles a very important issue, but uh, at its heart, it's about family. So mm -hmm. I really, that's why I'm, uh, I'm very close to No Honor. But I think someone like her, my, uh, the one I've just written, that should also appeal to a lot of people because of the fact that it's, 
there's a lot about family in it and mm -hmm. at the end of the day that's what matters okay so you've made a lot of your readers cry uh, with your work so have you ever cried uh, reading uh, your own work or writing your work not my own work no uh, uh, that's never happened <laughs> i think if i start crying about what i've written then i wouldn't be able to concentrate at all <laughs> Mm. But I do feel, I, I think a lot of books have affected me uh, emotionally. Mm. I, I'm not sure if you've read, uh, uh, what's it called, uh, Maggie O'Farrell's uh, Hamnet. That was a very emotional mm. book, I think. That really mm. affected me. And then there was this The Weekend by Charlotte Wood. So there are books that really affect you emotionally, mm. but, uh, but yeah. For me, no honor is on the top of the list. Well, I, I, don't, I, I have to say I'm glad, but I'm not glad that it made you cry, but I'm <laughs> glad that it, it was emotional enough to you know, mm. affect you. Okay, so someone like her, is it, uh, is it a sad book? Is it a happy book? Once we, once we finish it, how will we feel? Um, that's hard to say. I think that, mm -hmm. that, is, uh, that depends on the reader, whatever the reader takes from it. But I hope that uh, the, the end result of that book would be, I think the reader will feel a certain satisfaction that what, the, what they've read is good enough. Mm. and that uh, they enjoyed it. So I hope that they'll end up enjoying it. I, I'm not sure how they'll feel because mm. every person is different. But mm. uh, the, the only hope is the, that at the end of the day, they'll like what the, whatever. Mm. So, yeah. mm. Okay, very nice. So, Aves, you're not only a successful novelist, but you also teach the craft of fiction uh, in the Writing Institute, which you founded a few years ago. So, what advice would you like to give to young writers, young novelists who want to be writers but don't know anything about the process? Uh, my first a bit of advice is to read as much as you can. Get your hands on whatever you can. Uh, there are so many bookshops in Pakistan and uh, I mean, there aren't enough libraries unfortunately, but uh, there are lots of places where you can get secondhand books if you uh, don't want to buy originals. So just read whatever you can, read newspapers if you want. I think uh, that really improves your, uh, it sort of improves everything subconsciously. You know, may not even realize it, but it's all being absorbed by your mind. It's kind of like a sponge, you know, in our mind, mm -hmm. it's absorbing a lot. And similarly, if you are interested in writing about uh, uh, in a particular genre, then try to read books in that genre because that will also help you and that will help you see what, how this uh, book, how this genre is attempted. Uh, like for example, if you want to write a crime novel, then it's, I think it's logical that you should read crime fiction so to get an mm -hmm. idea of how police procedure works and all of that so yeah mm -hmm. so that would be my advice read as much as you can and uh, mm -hmm. there's no harm and there's no uh, embarrassment in taking courses for writing i've mm -hmm. done the same i've been mm -hmm. learning how to write for the longest time and uh, i i i am living i'm a living example of the fact that you can learn how to write mm. so, yeah. okay very interesting but uh, Aves, what we see in Pakistan about the writing and reading culture in Pakistan that very few, if any, uh, young uh, children would say that, you know, I want to grow up and I want to be a novelist because we don't have a lot of role models yeah. uh, who are novelists. You know, in uh, Pakistan, we've seen people like Manto who are uh, champions of literature, but they did not have very good lives. And if we compare that to the West, you know, do you think they celebrate their writers more or they appreciate the craft of fiction more than we do? Absolutely. I think in the West, uh, it's much more appreciated and there is a system in place, you see. So if someone is writing a book and that book is being published by a uh, publisher and all of that, uh, uh, the book will be available in bookshops, it will be available on Amazon, people will buy it and, that, uh, and the writer will be able to make an income. Whatever that income is, they will be able to make something. In Pakistan, the problem is that people want writers to be in rags. That is the perception that writers should be in rags and God forbid if you ask someone that, you know, I should be paid for what I've written, they're like, why? This should be free. Uh, I, I, it's not everyone, uh, not everyone in Pakistan is like this, but a significant majority do feel the, that uh, writers should not be paid for what they're doing and it should be a public service. I understand that to some extent that yes, maybe people might not be able to afford it or whatever, but then there are libraries, then you can, you know, sort of pool money together to buy a copy. It, Writers are also human, so I think it's very important to treat them as such and if they've written something, if you put in so much effort into something, you deserve to be paid and that is something the West has figured out. They have so many writers, they have, I think Ireland is a country of 5 million and they have so many authors, so many writers coming out of that uh, tiny country. Pakistan is 225 million I think now and you can literally count on your fingers how many authors mm. are currently in business in Pakistan. So, uh, so yeah, I think that to some extent that's the problem and uh, 
also family values they don't sort of encourage writing as a profession and i don't blame them because there is very little money for a writer based in pakistan and published in pakistan so mm-hmm. this industry is set in a way that discourages people from trying to even get published mm. yes yes you right and let's delve more into the publishing industry so uh, there are no agents in pakistan right no. and if uh, a young writer wants to get published can they go to let's say a retailer like readings or liberty books or or some other retailers who may publish them vanguard publishing do you think these companies can be or provide a ray of hope uh, for these aspiring writers well as if all you want to do is see your work in print then yes uh, these publishers i'm i'm sure they're doing a good job there are some really nice new publishers that have come out like zuka books and ala books and uh, reverie and but then again they're small and uh, they're trying to make their voice heard in a in a in an industry in a country where that doesn't want to li- hear their voice mm-hmm. so that that is a, again a challenge uh, but yeah i think uh, readings is publishing but mostly they're publishing uh, books that from renowned authors they're just uh, taking a take, taking a backlists and stuff like that so for debut authors it's a very tough market so only the new indie publishers are taking a chance on debut authors but then again the distribution issue uh, getting the work in bookshops the bookshops will not support them so there's so mm. much uh, i don't know first industry is so tiny i think there's a great deal of competition and jealousy and all of that so all of that comes into play and that uh, at the end of the day that harms writers mm. so yeah mm. yes yeah, right and vest one question i always wanted to ask you even in my last interview but i forgot is that do you think a reason why uh, a lot of fiction the fiction english fiction Uh, in pakistan is not that popular is because uh, pakistani audiences can't read english a lot and they they would be more inclined towards urdu literature so do you think language plays a barrier because possibly like 10% of the people would appreciate uh, literature in english in pakistan so do you think that plays a factor it could uh, actually uh, but then again you see pakistan is a country of we have a huge population where i think the fifth most populous country in yes. the world so even then i think we have a significant number of people who read in english uh, you just have to see the numbers that these pirated publish uh, the people mm. these uh, who pirate books are making the, the, the amount of money so i recently got uh, someone in karachi told me that there were 10000 copies of in the company of strangers all wow. pirated being sold wow. in karachi some market so wow. people are buying it either they don't have the awareness that what they're buying is pirated either they don't know mm. or they don't care so it's either of that and both of these things it's wrong because at the end of the day i don't get anything mm. so i think there are readers here the only thing is lack of awareness and lack of care mm. and uh, people just say that get the book to me and then it's not just the pirated things uh, uh, copies there's the issue of pdfs Mm. I get 20 messages every day from mm. send me a people, free PDF sir can you send me a PDF I'm like why do you why, why are you asking me for a PDF they're like I just want to read your book I'm like go ahead and buy it from workshop they're like no sir but you must be a millionaire anyway so you can afford to send me a PDF I'm like exactly this is how I am a millionaire <laughs> by sending out PDFs to everyone and the funny thing is the uh, authors generally don't even have the PDF it's with the publisher they don't give us the PDF mm-hmm. so mm. it's just I I I don't understand I I think Pakistan does have Uh, Pakistan can sustain a publishing industry a very very good publishing industry it just chooses not to mm mm very interesting and one thing i've seen is that in pakistani culture whether it's in any province the culture is that you know people go home they watch tv all the time kids are watching cartoons uh, elders are watching news uh, their mothers or their aunts are watching dramas or something but there's not a big reading culture so do you think the Uh, the dominance of television and then social media youtube that has eroded the interest in reading um i i think to some extent there wasn't any interest to start with in pakistan uh, even even back when there wasn't any social media people were mostly watching television and mm-hmm. uh, there weren't enough readers i think to some extent social media has encouraged people to read you know with tiktok the trends like i saw it on tiktok and then mm-hmm. there's a bookstagram community on instagram Mm. and similarly book twitter on twitter so i think social media has brought authors to the uh, mm. forefront in a way mm. and, uh, and uh, some authors have gone on not pakistanis obviously but a lot of authors have become celebrities like james patterson stephen king they've always been popular but with social media it's even more they become mm. even more popular 
So I think there is a great deal of, uh, uh, inf uh, social media has a great deal of influence and it can make people. I think it, it has that uh, in, a, uh, in all these apps, they, they're able to make a person uh, uh, sort of improve a writer's uh, exposure or profile or whatever. And I think to some extent they are doing that. Mm. So yeah, I think it might actually improve Mm. Uh, reading in this country but then again you see the issue is piracy and availability mm. a lot of there are so many readers who get in touch with me and they're like I'm very sad I got a pirated copy I thought I or I'd ordered an original that's also a problem that people don't even mm. know that they're buying pirated books yes you're right you know on Instagram I've seen ads of companies who sell very mm. cheap books oh, but yeah. they uh, they're all pirated but yes. they're allowed to be advertised on social platforms it, so that's that also is, a problem that is also a problem and Good bookshops in Islamabad. I was in Islamabad last year and good bookshops, I mean not the ordinary mm. ones, the proper bookshops, uh, I saw that they uh, sort of wrapped the books in plastic. Yeah, it, it that's a very common thing. It's impossible to tell that this is actually mm. pirated co uh, copy unless you open it and feel mm. the paper and you know sort of mm. uh, go through it. So I just tore away the plastic just to see and it was pirated and I was like, th what are you doing? You're hoodwinking people, uh, not just readers, you're taking money away from writers. Mm. and publishers which is a travesty and if at the end of the day writers don't make any money why would they want to write I mean yes people mm. love write for the love of writing but if they're not getting paid it's a simple case of survival isn't it mm. Mm. if you're in a job and uh, your manager or your employer asks you to keep working for free you'll mm. work for free for a month for two months maybe after that you'll be like I can't <laughs> I can't yes. survive on this yes the same is for writers if you keep on snatching and uh, snatching away their income at at some point, they'll be like, we give up. Mm. So that's what's happening in Pakistan. Mm, no, yes, you're absolutely right. And in the end, Wes, I'd like to ask you, uh, is that a lot of Pakistani writers were getting published in India. Penguin also has an office in India, I believe. And that was, that's a big publisher accessible to uh, Pakistani writers. So do you think the, uh, the ban of trade with India has negatively impacted writers in Pakistan? I think it has completely um, has sort of... Uh, it's it's destroyed our industry to be honest this uh, trade ban with India because not just Penguin Penguin Harper Collins Hachette Simon and Schuster Pan Macmillan Bloomsbury they all have offices in India they have offices in Delhi and they are responsible to uh, for publishing uh, work from the entire South Asia so uh, authors from all over South Asia can submit to them and they will publish it and so many Pakistani authors were being published in India. And those books were coming to Pakistan, obviously, and uh, they were doing really well. Some authors have gone on to make a lot of money. With the trade ban, what's happened is not a single book can come into Pakistan from India. I was published in India with Simon & Schuster. In the Company of Strangers, not a single copy came from there. They had to engage a local publisher in Pakistan in order mm. to make sure that the book was published. So that sort of stops those publishers from acquiring Pakistani authors because at the end of the day publishing is a business isn't it they have to make money to survive so mm -hmm. if they can't even send a Pakistani author's book to Pakistan then what's the point of publishing that author mm -hmm. and that's why you see very few books coming out of uh, India now uh, mm -hmm. featuring Pakistani authors because of that mm -hmm. this and this has not just damaged us but it has totally obliterated whatever mm -hmm. industry there was in Pakistan mm -hmm. uh, uh, publishing wise no, you're right and uh, we hope the government looks into I this issue so. yeah. and uh, yeah. solves the problems of uh, Pakistani writers. Yeah. So, uh, Aves, in the end, would you like to say anything to your readers? My, um, I'd only like to say that thank you so much for supporting me for so long and uh, thanks for all your uh, wonderful words and people reach out to me on Twitter and so on Instagram and they always have so nice, such nice things to say about my work. So keep on supporting me and please keep buying original books. It only there's only like a two or three hundred rupee difference between a pirated and an original. So please do invest in that so that writers can keep on producing work and Pakistan can actually uh, sort of be an important country as far as publishing is concerned. Because right now it's just a blip on the radar of all these big publishers. They're not concerned about Pakistan. So let's make Pakistan, you know, more important. So thank you. Very nice. Thank you, Abbas, for your time. No, no, my pleasure.